Kenza, Commissioner Goodrow. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, when Daniel Smith uh, came to us at the last meeting, he asked us to uh, look into Agenda 21, the form of resolution in opposition to uh, United Nations Agenda. I'm sorry, Agenda 21. Um, I've got a short uh, video presentation here. It's about 14 minutes long. It's basically information on the United Nations Agenda 21, and it's directed mainly at property rights uh, and for public officials or elected officials uh, to update them a little bit on Agenda 21. Um, I would venture to say pretty much every household in Allegheny County has already been affected by Agenda 21. If anyone has a smart appliance or an Energy uh, Star appliance, you've been affected. They have the potential of communicating with the new uh, power meters that uh, Blue Ridge Electric has installed. So they know really when your appliances are running, what temperature your water heater is set at, and um, you know, it, it's far reaching. It goes a lot further than really just, you know, this film uh, shows. But, you know, I wanted to show this and then, you know, if I could, I'd do a little bit discussion at the end. So, wanted to be ready, Karen. In this presentation, you will learn how the UN's Agenda 21, or Sustainable Development, affects property ownership. You will also find sources for additional information. As Americans, our property rights matter. Land, buildings, and material goods are the means by which we live. Without rights over our property, we have no rights over our very means of survival, and therefore, we are no longer free. Our founding fathers knew this and declared our rights unalienable meaning no person could ever take them away. So critical are property rights that our Constitution protects them in the Fifth Amendment. No person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Individual rights and freedoms are two elements that make America exceptional. Not all nations think that way. Sustainable development was coined in a 1987 report to the UN called Our Common Future. It is defined as development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. This sounds fine, until you read the report. It states, poverty is a major cause and effect of global environmental problems. It then blames nations like the United States for consuming too much and having too much wealth, much of it in the form of private property. The report concludes, the only way to make the future sustainable is to reduce America's living standards and transfer our wealth to developing nations. The radical ideas promoted in Our Common Future were codified as Agenda 21 at the 1992 UN Conference on Environment and Development, known as the Rio Earth Summit. 18,000 people from around the world attended. Agenda 21, according to the UN literature, is a comprehensive plan of action to be taken globally, nationally, and locally by organizations of the UN system in every area in which human beings impact the environment. More than 178 nations adopted Agenda 21, 
including George H.W. Bush for the United States. Although Congress never approved the program, President Clinton established by executive order the President's Council on Sustainable Development, whose stated purpose was to implement Agenda 21 in the United States. The President's Council on Sustainable Development operated through 1999, but its actions are now embedded in every federal agency and influence state and local communities across the United States. President Obama's Executive Order 13575 created the White House Rural Council, which further authorized every federal agency to oversee all food, fiber, and energy needs for all rural sustainable communities in America. The UN groups use the terms sustainable development and Agenda 21 interchangeably. Most people never heard of Agenda 21, and here's why. J. Gary Lawrence is a world leader in smart growth. He served as advisor to the President's Council on Sustainable Development. Writing for the Millennium Papers, a strategic planning publication for Agenda 21, Lawrence said, participating in a UN-advocated planning process would very likely bring out many who would actively work to defeat any elected official undertaking local Agenda 21. So, we will call our process something else, such as comprehensive planning, growth management, or smart growth. And they have. Agenda 21 uses warm and fuzzy names that blanket it in environmental causes like smart growth, open spaces, and social justice, to name a few. Regardless of the name, the intention is to remove this, called urban sprawl, and replace it with this, often whether you want it or not. Agenda 21 mandates that all states, including the United States, must resolve all environmental disputes peacefully and in accordance with the Charter of the UN, not in accordance with our own nation's laws. Our Constitution says that man's rights are inherent to his nature as a man, and as such are unalienable. This is in direct opposition to the UN Declaration, which holds that man's rights are granted by other men, and therefore can be taken away by men. Sustainable development's political agenda originates in the UN's founding documents. This is not surprising, since many of the nations represented needed a point of agreement to rally around. The UN Charter provided that. Whereas our Declaration of Independence protects our citizens and their labor, the UN Declaration grants government the authority to withhold your property for the good of the community. To implement sustainable development in the United States, unalienable rights, such as the right to property, must be eroded or struck down altogether. The authors of Agenda 21 said it will affect every area of all human life grouped according to three objectives, equity, economy, and the environment. By defining these terms vaguely, a litany of abuses in states, counties, and local communities has resulted. By rubber stamping preconceived plans, using manipulative visioning and consensus sessions to create the appearance of public buy-in, and acquiring grants from sources with questionable motives, the entire process of implementing sustainable development policies is suspect. Social equity means using the law to restructure American life. The authors of sustainable development knew their objectives would clash with those of the average U.S. citizen. Therefore, to achieve their objectives, they called for a shift in attitudes. The premise of sustainable development is that individual human wants, needs, and desires must conform to the views and dictates of the planners. Harvey Rubin, executive member of ICLA, has said that individual rights will have to take a back seat to the collective in the process of implementing sustainable development. The next C is economy. Remember, Agenda 21's core purpose is the international redistribution of wealth and the creation of public-private partnerships. Maurice Strong, at his opening speech at Agenda 21 Earth Summit in 1992, said, current lifestyles and consumption patterns of the affluent middle class involving high meat intake, use of fossil fuels, appliances, home and work air conditioning, and suburban housing are not sustainable. According to Agenda 21's preamble, the developmental and environmental objectives of Agenda 21 will require a substantial flow of new and additional financial resources to developing countries. This declaration mandates, if the conditions of the poor are to be improved, wealth must be taken from the rich, in this case, U.S. property owners. Sustainable development planners use conservation easements, eminent domain, reauthoring of master community plans, enhanced regulations, and millions of dollars in grant money to acquire private property as the means to redistribute wealth both in theory and practice. This is effectively lowering the U.S. standard of living to that of the rest of the world. Agenda 21 states that equity will be achieved through implementation of the international economic order and through transfers of resources to developing countries. In addition to its appeal for international redistribution of wealth, sustainable
Political development restructures the economy by replacing our free enterprise system with public-private partnerships. Public-private partnerships provide lucrative contracts for those companies partnering with the government and non-governmental agencies, while non-partnered companies struggle to survive against their subsidies, regulations, tax breaks, and insider privileges. With it goes the free market system. Sustainable development places nature over man. According to the Rio Declaration, human beings are at the center of concerns for sustainable development. We are only entitled to a healthy life if it is in harmony with nature. It continues, to achieve sustainable development, states should reduce and eliminate unsustainable patterns of production and consumption. Most people support laws to protect the environment. Sustainable development uses the environmental movement as a means to promote a political agenda. ICLEI is a non-governmental organization tasked with rolling out sustainable development. Their action plan restructures the world's governments so that all people will be the subjects of a global collective. The implementation requires the surrender of many individual and property rights. Once fully implemented, ordinary people will be left unprotected from de facto decrees placing nature above man while relegating man to the status of a biological reason. The method of implementing sustainable development in communities is alarming. Projects are often initiated by groups such as ICLEI or the American Planning Association who create fear over problems portrayed as a crisis. Farmland development, urban sprawl, poor water management, wildlife preservation, or too many cars on the freeway are examples. Stakeholder council meetings are typically arranged under the auspices of soliciting input from community members. Often these are already supporters of the plan. Surveys poll a small number of residents and include loaded questions such as, which of the following areas do you think should be protected or acquired? A typical stakeholder council meeting is run by a trained facilitator. His job is not to enter all views into the record, but to guide the group to a predetermined consensus. Tactics vary between facilitators, but consensus generally is reached by subtly marginalizing opposition while recording the good ideas and allowing criticism only for the bad ones. Once a problem has been identified, every NGO, nonprofit, and local government has a vast stock of boilerplate solutions at hand, enabling them to identify problems with the goal of implementing predetermined outcomes that advance sustainable development policies. The same stock solutions are applied in Stockholm, Boulder, Santa Cruz, or anywhere in the world. ICLEI, whose mission is to help local governments implement sustainable development, has worldwide offices and operates in over 600 U.S. communities. Today, every county in the United States has sustainable development directives guided by federal agencies, NGOs, and or ICLEI. NGOs often gain local community compliance with promises of funding grants. Their list of money sources is impressive and includes the Nature Conservancy, the Sierra Club, the National Audubon Society, the American Planning Association, and the National Teachers Association. Over 2,000 NGOs are accredited by the United Nations for the purpose of implementing sustainable development in America. They receive massive tax advantages from the IRS. This map shows the UN's vision for our country's land use when sustainable development is fully implemented. The black areas are where humans will be permitted to live. Sustainable development is a plan for global control using land and resource restriction, social transformation through education, and other programs. The land use element of sustainable development calls for two action plans designed to reduce or eliminate private property, the Wildlands Project and Smart Growth. Upon implementation, all human action is subject to control. Since all things ultimately come from natural resources on rural lands, the transfer of land from citizen to government control will make it easy for government and its partners to control what we have, what we do, and where we go. The rural land use embodied in the Wildlands Project is tied to its urban counterpart, smart growth. As human beings are barred from rural land, there will be a concentration of human activity in urban areas. Through smart growth, the infrastructure is being created for a post-private property area in which human action is subject to the centralized government planning. Sometimes called comprehensive planning or growth management, smart growth is a centralized control of every aspect of urban life, including energy and water use, housing, population growth and control, public health and dietary regimens, resources and recycling, social justice and education, toxic technology and waste management, transportation and air quality, business, and economic activity. Citizens are becoming aware. Commissioners in Carroll County, Maryland abolished the Office of Sustainability.
Spartanburg, South Carolina, Las Cruces, New Mexico, New Rochelle, New York, Amador County, California, Carver, Massachusetts, and dozens of other communities are either pulling out or pushing back against ICLE, the American Planning Association, and Smart Growth. Here are eight steps officials can take to protect their citizens' property rights. Place individual property rights first in all planning negotiations and actions. Refuse federal or state money for new sustainable development programs and transition out of existing ones. Do not accept grant money without examining all of the attached stipulations. Avoid consortiums for the purpose of obtaining grant money. Avoid partnerships with the federal government, HUD, NGOs, foundations, and corporations that advance the sustainable development agenda. Be certain any plan you implement can be repealed if it is found to infringe on individual property rights. Work with citizens to create a property rights council. And work with planners who will protect citizens' property rights. Our local communities are in peril because a small group seeks to convince us that unless we surrender our property and freedoms, unless we subsume our individual rights to the good of the community, the planet will not survive. Yet this is a false choice. For over 200 years, Americans have protected our planet, our nation, and our liberties. As communities, we can pull together to create our own plans to improve the environment without the control of international groups and the seductive lure of easy federal grants. Together, we can respect our environment and keep our rights and freedoms. Working together, that is the real choice. Here are some resources to check for more information. Thank you. Thanks for uh, you know watching the film. Uh, United Nations Agenda 21 is very real. Like I said, it's already occurring here in Allegheny County, and I believe the other commissioners probably got the same letter I did from the uh, Department of the Interior not long ago, uh, probably within the last month, where they plan on uh, acquiring land, I think three sites in the county, uh, as you know, wildlife preserve uh, lands, uh, which. You know, purchasing from the taxpayer takes it off our tax rolls, uh, but that is part of Agenda 21, and it's something that you know we need to stand in opposition to. Um, last uh, meeting, uh, you got a packet from uh, that Mr. Smith provided us uh, that has uh, two pro proclamations from uh, Bear County and Gaston County here in North Carolina opposing the United Nations 21. I would like to do the same here in Allegheny County. Uh, I'm ready to make that motion now, or if you need more time to really uh, study Agenda 21 so you fully understand it, uh, and we can go that route and place this on uh, the first meeting, uh, or the, on the agenda for the first meeting in uh, July, and then, like I said, I'll be happy to make the motion to, uh, for the Allegheny to adopt the resolution opposing the United Nations 21, similar to Gaston County and Bear County. And if there's any questions, comments? So. Well, I would say that was that was a lot of information, Mr. Goodrell. I got a couple of the uh, where to go for additional information. But, uh, I personally would would like to have a little more time. To to research this out. I apologize for not uh, having that done up today. Um, I've been uh, doing with numbers the last yes. few days. So, uh, well, and, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to give you some time, too, is, you know, we are wrestling with the budget right now. And I think this, you know, again, this 
this is a, a topic that you know you really need to look into and understand. And you know, as Mr. Smith said, I mean, it's not any one political party. Uh, both parties uh, have opposition to it. Uh, you know, it's it's real. We need to take a look at it. And yeah, if you would like, we'll just put it on the agenda for the first meeting in July, and then we'll move forward from there. Uh, item three on uh, Commissioner's business.